tonight on the final play. Saints camp is underway, highlighted by some big catches, but full of productivity and positivity. They're guys that like playing football. We'll recap the first four days, examine the young wide receiver core, and hear from Heath Evans after the former Saint and Super Bowl champ spent a day with Sean Payton at practice. Maybe there's going to be a bloodbath. <laughs> Plus, check in on the black and gold's opposition as camp gets underway across the NFC South. And we'll preview the college campaign set to start right here in South Louisiana. From Fox 8 Sports, this is the final play. Brought to you by Southern Quality Ford Dealers and Oceana Grill. Welcome to the final play, and even better, welcome to football season. I'm Chris Hagan. For the Saints, it's been an off-season of some change, but for the better from what we can see so far. An improved roster defensively that's most important, healthy, and an offense with some new weapons led once again by Drew Brees, at least for one more season. But what the black and gold hope they can change the most is their culture from the last two years back to their winning roots. Juan Kincaid has more from the first four days of Saints training camp. From the moment they first stepped foot on the Greenbrier practice field four days ago, the Saints have put an emphasis on turning back the clock. To a decade ago when Sean Payton and Drew Brees and the others showed up, and along with them, a new approach to winning. It all began in training camp. There's a sense of urgency. The teams are different. Um, and I said earlier, this team will write its own chapter. This team will write its own book. But this book will have some of the same characters in it. Of course, Drew Brees is the main one, and much of the team's success still hinges on how well he plays. And perhaps a new contract for him hinges on how far he can take this team this season. My mindset is, is the same, whether I've got a one-year deal or a five-year deal, or it's your, your, in my mind, it's a game-to-game -game basis. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I've got to, each and every week, I've got to go out and I've got to prove it. I've got to prove that I give us the best chance to win. I got to prove that I'm a leader on the team that's going to get the best out of everybody around me and myself. And so that's that's always my mindset. Also back from that decade old team, Roman Harper, whom the team brought back into the fold after a couple of successful seasons in Carolina. I never thought I'd actually be wearing a 41 jersey for the Saints again. Again, it's the team's attempt at recapturing some of that 2006 magic. And sandwiched between those two stalwarts, a number of guys that have continued to turn heads here at the Greenbrier. The ones you know, like Cam Jordan and Delvin Bro, have been steady and chosen to let their game do the talking. My story always going to stick with me because that's just who I am and what happened. Um, but, um, you know, actually, last night I rewatched the story, you know, just to see, like, how far I've came. Um, so, you know, I just think it's inspiring, man, and I'm going to just continue to keep playing and, and, and giving my all when I'm out there. My role is whatever it needs to be. Um, if it's to be a leader, if it's to teach, I'm willing to do whatever it takes. And there are the guys that are still trying to become household names, like C.J. Spiller, who waited until after July 4th to hit the ground running full speed. And it's paid off. That's when I started back training. Uh, that was my first time getting out there, running and cutting. And at first, I was hesitant because I hadn't, hadn't done it in so long. And once I made that first cut during the drill, I was like, OK, I'm back to the thriller. Open your hips and go. And Jarris Bird, who for the first time since becoming a Saint, joined his teammates in drills on day one of training camp. This game is 100%, you know, everyone's going to get injured. But, you know, I understand the position that I was, I'm in, you know, with, you know, my contract, everything like that, that, you know, you expect to be available. You got to be available. And if you're looking for players that have impressed the coaching staff from day one, you have to begin with the quarterback of the defense, James Laurinaitis, who's been compared to former Saint Jonathan Vilma. I'm extremely humbled by it. Um, I'm a, I was a huge Jonathan Vilma fan. Uh, goodness, even in high school, to be compared or you know at least with the same idea as John is is humbling. Because I know I know the standard he kind of set for linebacker play around here. And rookie wideout Michael Thomas, who on day two of training camp left his calling card in the end zone. No doubt, the best catch of the camp. Followed up by catches that at least have his teammates convinced that Thomas is the real deal. So I love that kid. I love that kid. He, he has a nose for the football, um, and he's, he's got a this kind of want to get the ball no matter where it's at and, and and that's what you want in the receiver i was like whoa this guy gonna be something special it was indeed special but we've seen a number of players have an early eyebrow raiser from great catches to big hits from the defense this camp's had it all and in the days to come more is expected
The Saints are set for their fifth straight day of practice tomorrow before their first off day on Tuesday. Back on the grind for the next five days and then August 8th they head to New England. Two joint practices before a Thursday night preseason opener against the Pats right here on Fox 8. For more from the Greenbrier, let's head back to Juan Kincaid. Happy to be joined by Heath Evans, NFL Network, and also you know him as a former Saint. When you look at this football team, you, you're all over the country visiting camps. What's your first impressions after seeing this team? Well, at this point in the year, I don't try to compare them to other teams, but I do think back to last year where I was here the first day of pads, and yeah, I remember talking with Sean last year going like, this is a, a slower, younger team, and I think it wasn't athletic ability. It was just mental slowness, a lot of young talent. Um, this year, they're faster. And I think some of the young talent, even the rookies, um, Sheldon, your first round pick at D-line today, just, just made some plays that just got given talent. That you're like, wow, I can get excited about that. Linebacker level, DB level, um, there's been leadership added, which I think people say, oh, yeah, the old players, they're not as fast. Right, they're not, but they make everyone faster around them because they're lined up right. So some of the small transitions that they've made this offseason, I think will pay dividends. Um, and then these wide receivers are huge. Like, I, I look at him, and I'm like, you know, from Coleman, I'm like, dear Lord, because Marcus, you know, you know, was so big. But this guy's a different level of athleticism that just we'll see if he can grab it mentally. Sean said on day one here that camp was going to kind of resemble 2006 and, of course, 2009, the year you were here. <laughs> when he says something like that, what does that mean to you since you were with this team in 09? It means it's going to be a bloodbath. <laughs> I mean, you can't have the two days anymore, so there's only so much you could put on the guys, especially physically. Um, but the mentality, our game is such a, it's a mental game because you, you face the, the challenge every day. Am I going to win in practice or am I going to lose in practice? And not only the, the guy you're facing, but the, just the inner struggle of like, man, it's hot and it's humid and my body hurts and, and this and that. And so um, I think when the mantra is constantly driven by Sean and then it's picked up by Cameron and picked up by Drew and, and Roman and, and now James Laurinaitis and these guys and Streif, just the talk because you, you keep people's minds full of, okay, what's the thought process? Why are we here? And we're not letting a rep slip away. We're definitely not letting a day slip away. And when you haven't made the playoffs in three of the last four years, you got to kind of change things up. They're going on the road for two different workouts, New England and Houston. Yeah. That's unusual, isn't it? Well, in, in two different teams that do things differently, even though Billy O comes from the Belichick tree, um, you know, the way they're forced to do their offense in Houston, it's different than what Brady and, and Josh McDaniels are going to do. They're two different defenses, too, that go about their business. So the challenges that Drew will see um, will be good ones. Um, and anytime you can line up versus 99 and J.J. Watt, you, you want your O-line to see that because if you can have some form of success versus him, um, and I know he won't be there in the preseason, but what they do, um, you know you can face anything else this league has to offer. No doubt. Speaking of Drew, how do you think that contract situation plays out? I think Drew's nowhere close to done. You know, last year, listen, when you have O-line issues, you can tend to have quarterback issues, and then health issues follow for that quarterback. We we saw it with Andrew Luck last year. You know, the guy had been a warrior, and he started taking a beating, and listen, as big as he is at 245, he still wasn't able to finish the year. So, listen, I've seen arm talent on arm talent. Um, Drew hasn't changed. He beats people mentally. Um, if the O-line will hold up their end of the bargain, Drew's not going anywhere. He'll finish a saint. Um, Mickey and Sean aren't crazy. He's irreplaceable. I'll say it again. He's irreplaceable. They're not letting him go. Dennis Allen, how much pressure is on this guy to, to get this defense fixed? Because everyone on the outside is saying if only they had a, a decent defense, like they had no nine, wasn't yeah. great, but, but they got the job done. It was yeah. enough. Well, I think Dennis's one probably marching orders from Sean is let's find the one area to be great at. You know, in 2009, it was turnovers. Yes. You know, the, the defensive numbers as a whole weren't all that great, but boy, were they going to give us one extra possession. And then we were going to take that one extra possession and get three or seven points, and we were going to win most of our games. So if it's not turnovers, it, it better be red zone defense or, or it better be rush defense. you, you got to force teams' hand to be one-dimensional somehow. And so I think Sean will lead those orders in the sense of let, let's find an area that we can excel at. I wondered how he visualized as James Laurinaitis in this, this defense. He called him the next Jonathan Vilma. That's some big shoes to fill, but Laurinaitis has shown over the years he can play <laughs> at that level, but that, that's pretty strong, isn't it? Well, and for the Saints faithful, we knew what 51 brought yes. to the table in so many ways, and so much of what Jonathan did, I'm not even sure the, the average eye had respect for. I mean, the angles and the tempo that Jonathan could play with and just the, the details of his mental game and trying to diagnose what we were doing. James is smart and sharp, and I think as he gets um, his feet wet in his defense and starts to learn 
not only what Dennis wants, but really what Sean and Mickey wants. I think we'll see a lot of that leadership. But uh, there was there was 151 in, in this defense, and we'll, we'll leave that with Jonathan. But I expect I called James a few months ago when when the news broke and just said, Hey, listen, we need you here, and and you're going to bring something to this defense that it's lacked since 51 hung the cleats up. One last thing, Sean Payton, 10 years in now, we know he doesn't have the pressure of on the last year of a contract he's got the extension so what's his motivation is it just getting back to the playoffs once again making oh. that last run don't know how long it's going to be with drew Brees. yeah no point. it's a ring when you taste it it's like you ask brady what's your favorite ring he answers the next one yeah so sean i mean sean told us after 2009 hey we've tasted the fillet we don't ever want to go back to the sirloin <laughs> and and that and now it's only that fillet has gotten more bitter and bitter because it's been so long since they've tasted it but but you still have enough in there to know of what it once felt like so the play Playoffs. I mean, I, that's old hat. You know, I think um, I know Nine's not thinking that. You know, I mean, I talked to Cameron Jordan for 15 minutes ago and Spiller, and um, th those boys are their mind is focused on a ring. And obviously, it starts with winning this division. Thank you, Heath. Yeah, man. More Saints coverage coming up as Sean Fazan shines a light on the young receivers from the return of Brandon Cooks and Willie Sneed to the arrival of Michael Thomas. This group is making an impression. Find out how they're making it work. You're watching the final play. The other announcement, where's Jim Henderson? Huh? Seven years old. Happy birthday. Fantastic. Good stuff. And as Jim celebrates a happy 70th birthday, he can recall many groups of wide receivers over his years as the voice of the Saints, but 2016's could prove to be one of a kind. What they lack in age, they make up for in raw talent, much of which we saw last season and already in the first few days of training camp. Sean Fazan gives us a deeper look. It's a group that's long on talent, but short on experience. We are young, yes. Uh, but, you know, it, it is game. You know, you can't let your youth, uh, you know, hold you back from being great. Of the 12 wide receivers on the Saints' 90-man roster, only newly signed Hakeem Nix is over the age of 24. I remember when I was a younger guy, uh, we had veteran presence, and, you know, you kind of look to that. You might not say nothing, but you kind of look to that. That is true, but it's also true that this group is not afraid of their youth beginning with Brandon Cooks, who's picked up right where he left off from last season. He's made several downfield catches and been explosive once he catches the pass. The yards at the catch, you know, that's where I need to be dynamic. Uh, you know, I should be able to catch, you know, uh, short routes and take them the distance, and that's, that's what it's going to be all about. Brandon Coleman has had some drops, but has also made some nice catches, as has Willie Sneed, whose consistency in football IQ got him on the team in almost 1,000 yards last season. This camp, his goal is simple. This year around, I'm just trying to get better, trying to build off of last year, and just trying to you know, improve myself, improve my game, and help this team get to where they want to be. While Cooks, Sneed, and Coleman have all had big moments here at camp, the unquestioned star of the wide receiver room has been the youngest of the group, rookie wide receiver Michael Thomas. I love that kid. I love that kid. Oh, man. I, I was like, whoa, this guy's going to be something special. He's going to be great. He's going to be a great player. It's easy to see why his teammates are excited. Thomas has done just about everything. He's made tough catches in traffic and acrobatic catches like the one Saturday where he came back for a ball on Brian Dixon. But the play everyone has raved about came Friday when Thomas located a deep pass from Luke McCown and hauled it in with one hand. I feel like when the ball's in the air, covered or not, I trust my ball skills over whoever's over, who's covering me. So, you know, I take a lot of pride in my ball skills. So if I get my hands on, I want to make a play. For him, you're, you're seeing growth spurts right in front of your eyes. We all are. And we're all witnessing a youth movement at wide receiver, where these young bloods are out to prove age is but a number. We might be young, but uh, darn it, we're going we gonna to make great plays and we're going to do big things. And uh, we're not going to wait until our fifth, sixth year. We're going to do it now. With the Saints at the Greenbrier, I'm Sean Fazan for Fox 8 Sports. Coming up, the NFC South looks to be as strong as ever. We've got the scouting report from each as an LSU product in Carolina recovers from losing the Super Bowl, while Falcons coach Dan Quinn and Bucks quarterback Jameis Winston each embark on their second campaign. The final play. 
With the start of every football season comes optimism across the board that this year can be the year for any team. And that's especially true across the NFC South. Yes, the Panthers have won the division the last three years in a row, but apart from last year, it hasn't been by much. Now that being said, Carolina's still the team to beat in the NFC, and where they lose cornerback Josh Norman to Washington, they get back wide receiver Kelvin Benjamin, who missed the entire 2015 season. As a rookie in 2014, he caught for more than 1,000 yards and nine touchdowns, tossed in the reigning MVP Cam Newton, and a motivated New Orleans native Trey Turner, and you have a team that will be tough for the Saints to dethrone. Just getting there again, that's, that's a personal goal I have for myself. And um, just, just being at the, um, the peak of my position, um, being one of those players at the peak of my position, and, you know, just, just one of those best, <clears throat> uh, one of the best guards in the NFL, that's my personal goal. And, um, you know, as a team, I, I want us to go out there and I want us to keep working hard. And I want us to, um, I want us to jail, I want us to have fun. I think that's, I think that's a key thing for us. I want us to have fun with, with one another. And I think this training camp, uh, we're going to show a lot of that. The Falcons, on the other hand, are still searching for a few answers. After lighting up the league with a 13-3 and season in 2012, they've fallen off the map and haven't finished better than 500 in any of the last three seasons. The core of their success remains Matt Ryan, Julio Jones, and Pro Bowl running back Devontae Freeman. But after going with defensive players with three of their first four picks in the 2016 draft, we could see more of what second-year head coach Dan Quinn truly envisions for his team. We got started here today. I thought the first half of practice, I felt we were kind of feeling it out a little bit. And then as I thought into the second half, the speed really picked up. And uh, that's what we want to make sure each time we're out on this grass that we're going to emphasize where we can just go for it. it it's a good work, you know, for the first day. Uh, guys were on point in terms of their details. And uh, that's what I was really looking for to see where we're at heading into the first day. Then there's the Buccaneers and first-year head coach Dirk Cutter. He's not exactly new to the division after spending three seasons as the Falcons offensive coordinator and last year in the same role with the Bucs, but it represents a fresh start for Tampa coming off a 6-10 and season. He and his team will be hungry for a fast start in 2016 after ending 2015 on a four-game losing streak. Since Peyton and Breeze have entered the division, the Bucs have won the NFC South just once and finished third or fourth for eight seasons and counting. They know the difficult road that lies ahead. We gotta get better. Uh, first day is always an exciting day. It's exciting because we have these fans out here, all these kids out here uh, running around, and it always feels good to put on a show in front of the fans. You know, so we're excited, but we know we have a long way to go. We know we have to continue to get better. Uh, but I'm looking forward to getting better with this group of guys. <laughs> well, I want this team to progress fast. I mean, uh, you know, we want to be about excellence, and uh, you got to you got to start somewhere, and it's a it's a building process. So that's that's where we're at today. Coming up, we switch to the college gridiron for a preview of all our local teams as they get set to open up their own camps. You're watching the final play. The Tigers have 18 starters returning for what's expected to be a strong run at the college football playoff, but of all positions to come under question now, it's the kicker. With last year's starter transferring, the duties likely fell once again to Kobe Delahousse, who took most of the field goal attempts in 2014. However, after a tragic car accident that claimed the lives of two others and left Delahousse recovering with burns on his legs, the job is a bit up in the air. But of course, the main concern is the health of Kobe. Obviously, he's been through a, a real, you know, trauma. He realized that, you know, he was fortunate to get out of that back seat. Apparently, a tree fell on top of the car. A statement from the family reads, Our family sincerely appreciates the outpouring of support for Kobe since the accident last weekend. The number of calls, emails, and text messages that we have received from people throughout the country has been overwhelming and much appreciated. Kobe is in good hands with treatment to his injuries, and he's making progress with his recovery. We ask that you continue to pray for the families of Mike Sadler and Sam Foltz during this very difficult time. Mike and Sam were wonderful young men who Kobe had great admiration for. Please keep their families in your thoughts and prayers. Tulane football is set to kick off their summer camp this week, but first, 
Let's take a look back at the program's roller coaster of an offseason. Back in December, Troy Dannon was hired as athletic director. He swiftly hired Willie Fritz as head football coach just weeks after. Fresh off his second winning season at Georgia Southern, Fritz quickly got to work on the recruiting trail, securing 22 players for National Signing Day, including quarterbacks Darius Bradwell and Jonathan Brantley. Bradwell enrolled early and was in the mix for spring football in March. But they did lose a QB to another school in the area. Former Tulane signal caller Devin Powell will transfer and join the Colonels and be eligible to play right away. Last year, Powell completed 16 of 36 passes with one touchdown. Powell will be looking to help Nichols pick up where they left off, knocking off Southeastern in the Riverbell Classic to end last year. Southland Conference coaches picked the Colonels to finish 10th in their preseason poll, only ahead of Houston Baptist. And for head coach Tim Rebo, who didn't inherit a whole lot when he took over last year, it's just about continuing the process, building to where they want to be. Last year, I thought uh, the guys kind of went in blind. You know, uh, they trusted in us. Uh, you know, they wanted some change, they wanted some success, uh, and, then, and we had a little success. We had some small victories along the way last year. So I think this offseason, the expectations were a little bit different. For Southeastern, on the other hand, the bar is set high as it has been since Ron Roberts took over in Hammond. After winning the conference in 2013 and 2014, last season they took a dip and finished just 4-7. and seven. They were picked to finish 6th in the conference in the preseason poll, and if they want to prove their doubters wrong, Roberts knows what it will take. You better be loaded in the Southland Conference or you're not going to have an opportunity to compete with it. So obviously there's a lot more to it than that. And, and uh, I think you got to add the pieces of the puzzle of, you know, leadership, camaraderie, all those things. And for that, I'm excited. That being said, college football is just around the corner. Tulane will get things started for Southeast Louisiana teams when they open the season on a Thursday night at Wake Forest. LSU plays on national television on the opening Saturday at Lambeau Field against Wisconsin, while Southeastern makes the trip to Big 12 country and Oklahoma State. Nichols will take advantage of some extra rest time and travel to Georgia in week two. And as we continue to count down toward the NFL, college, and high school football seasons, be sure to join us every step of the way right here on Fox 8, online, and via social media for all of the latest news on your favorite teams. For Juan, Sean, Garland, Edwin, and John, thanks for joining us, and have a great night. The final play was brought to you by Southern Quality Ford Dealers and Oceana Grill.